After a few weeks of picking and fitting parts, I have finally completed my newest build, which has been rightfully named the Atom Smasher. Sunday Gundam. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are taking a detailed look at my new AR pistol build. I'm letting you know right now that I have not shot this yet and I will not be shooting it in this video. Instead I'm going to give you guys a detailed breakdown about how I went about this build, the parts that I used, approximation on price, and why I set it up the way that I have. This video will serve as a part one and then part two will come once I get a chance to take this thing up to my range and put it through its paces. So with all of that being said, let's get into the Atom Smasher. Here it is in all of its DLC glory. This is a 10 and a half inch AR pistol chambered in 5.56 with every high quality part you can imagine from the receiver set all the way down to the takedown pins. It took a lot of scrounging around on the internet, ordering duplicate parts to find ones that fit best and have the correct finish, but in the end I'm super happy with the result. Let's start off with the name that I've given this build, the Atom Smasher. All builds typically start with the lower and when I saw this Mega Arms GTR and the fit and finish on it, I knew that I wanted to base an entire build around it. Thanks to Panda Tactical, they were able to find me a matching billet upper and a 9 inch wedge lock handguard with the same coating. One thing that makes this build special is that Mega has since been bought out by Zeb, so finding these parts can be a little bit tricky unless you find a place with old stock where you can pick one up second hand. There is no clear confirmation yet, however, if they start rebranding these parts as Zev, these exact parts will no longer be available. If you happen to have a complete matching set like this, I would highly suggest holding on to it because soon it might be a piece of history. So I gave this its name based off of its Mega Atom logo. I may be in the minority here, but if you've ever done any research in physics, then you will know that Atom Smasher is another name for a particle accelerator. And what does this thing do? It accelerates particles. Obviously not as quick as super colliders like the LHC, However, for this video, we'll just say that it's kind of close. Underneath the handguard, you will find a ballistic advantage 10.3 inch barrel, a pistol length gas system, and then poking out the end is an AAC breakout 2.0 with a 51T blast diverter. The diverter is obviously removable. However, nine times out of 10, I will keep that in place to direct that concussive blast forward. I also went with a ballistic advantage bolt carrier group to match the barrel and a strike industries dust cover to close it all up. Now we're starting to get into the little pieces that took me a while to acquire. I was definitely being a little OCD when it came to finding parts that were extra functional, but at the same time had that sheen that matched the receiver set. If a part came in the mail and it was just too matte or kind of that weird off black, it didn't make the cut for this build. On the rear of the gun is an SB Tactical PDW brace, which allows for three different positions and has a convenient QD mount, which goes great with my two point sling setup. The QD mounts are Magpul and I'm running a Lunar Concepts contour sling and black multicam. Also on the handguard is a Strike Industries Link curved foregrip. The ergos are perfect for how I hold the gun. There's a few different positions that work with the setup, but most importantly, it keeps your hand from riding up and accidentally touching that muzzle device. Now let's move down to some of the lower parts starting with the trigger and damn is it a sweet trigger. This is the Geisley Super Dynamic Combat Trigger. It's a flat face, super crisp two stage trigger and in my opinion has the perfect pull weight at two and a half pounds for the first stage and two pounds for the second, giving a total pull weight of four and a half pounds. I have to give a big shout out to the team over at Geisley. I met some of them at their SHOT Show booth and they hooked it up with parts for this build and future builds as well. There honestly hasn't been a trigger of theirs that I've pulled and wasn't impressed with and the same goes for all of their parts. I'm also running their Super 43 braided wire spring and buffer combo. This concept allows the springs to flex separately from each other, displacing energy and decreasing the chance of a spring failure, making the gun more reliable. I also have the Geisley Super Charging Handle, which is ambidextrous dexterous and just so happens to match the finish of the build perfectly. Getting down to the nitty gritty, I have the trigger held in place using KNS anti-walk pins because I've shot this trigger in the past and I know this thing is smooth and very fast. I have the Radiant Weapons Talon Safety Selectors. They're ambi and I might be biased here but I think they killed it with the name selection. A Magpul K2 Grip which I run on most of my pistols simply for a better angle that it gives you when holding a short gun. Strike Industries Takedown Pins and Forward Assist. A Seekins Precision Bolt Catch. Initially I wanted to go with a bad lever, however the 
the finish of it looked terrible next to everything else on the gun, so I went with this and I'm actually really pleased with it. I'm running an Odin extended mag release which looks great and functions even better even with the anti-walk pins. And finally in the lower is a 20 round P mag with Terran Tactical plus 4 plus 5 base plates. The number of rounds you can fit really depend on the spring that's in the mag. I picked up a mag like this to keep the whole package as small as possible, giving me the option to stow it away. If you run a 30 rounder, it would make this thing a lot harder to pull out of a range bag or a backpack that this actually does fit in. Now I believe that covers all of the lower parts, so let's move up to this top rail. Starting up front, I'm running a Gen 2 Inforce WML with IR, which they generously sent me for this build, so thanks to Inforce for that. My preferred hand placement with the curved hand stop allows me to keep my hand a safe distance away from the muzzle, but still activate the light very easily. The light is 400 lumens, runs on a single CR123A battery, and has a few different modes that you can pick from. With the switch to the rear, you get the IR mode with constant and momentary. Definitely overkill for my personal uses, but it's a cool option to have. Then with the switch forward, where I typically keep it, you will get constant on with a quick press, momentary when you hold the switch, and a double tap will take you into strobe mode. The light attaches and detaches really quickly with this little set screw on the side. A ton of guys run these lights, and I have as well in the past, so I think it's gonna hold up on here for a long time without any issues. I'm sure some of you guys might like a dedicated review of this light, so maybe I'll make that happen in the future, as well as give two of them away, so stay tuned for that. Mounting the light up front causes me to have my MBUS Pro sights mounted slightly further back. That cuts down on the sight radius, which isn't ideal, however I'm running an optic and probably won't be shooting with iron sights much anyway. Speaking of that optic, I'm running the new Nikon P Tactical Spur, which was also generously sent to me for this build, so another big thanks is due to them. Nikon is obviously known for their rifle scopes and glass technology, however I think they killed it when designing this little red dot. The spur features their true color coating to minimize bluish tint that's commonly found with reflex sights. It is IPX7 rated and has a shockproof construction to withstand weather, recoil, and impacts. There are 10 levels of brightness settings, it has a nice wide field of view compared to some other small options like this, and it has a runtime of 15,000 hours. I have the spur mounted on a half inch UTG riser which gives me perfect co-witness with the MBUS sights, and I would be lying if I said that I didn't buy a couple of these until I found the right fit to get that co-witness. I obviously haven't shot any live rounds with this optic yet, however just from dry fire practice, I'm already a big fan of the glass, the wide field of view, and overall just the size and weight of the thing. In my opinion, it looks awesome on this build and it feels right at home with all of the other high quality components that went into it. Once I get around to the Sunday gun day of this build out on the range, I will definitely report back with some better impressions of how this thing actually performs. So I believe that is everything that went into the Atom Smasher. If you've been trying to keep tabs on all of the parts and prices, I left a rough estimate list down in the description below for you to check out. The numbers are obviously gonna vary depending on the parts and where you find them, so keep that in mind. And if you are really interested in a super detailed build list and price breakdown, I left that information over on Patreon, and you can also find a link to that in the description down below. Like I mentioned, you might have a hard time finding some of these parts, especially because some of them are not even available right now, but but if you were able to find all of these exact parts and pay full price for them, you would be looking at around $2,800 to $3,000. Obviously, I didn't cut any corners or go the cheap route on anything here because that's just my taste. I really do enjoy building these things almost just as much as shooting them, so if you don't like it, that's too bad because it's my gun, not yours. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll try to answer anything that's appropriate. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.